this 550 build video. I'm Nick Wisdom here with Hack TV, and uh, today's episode is going to be all about the tail. We're going to put the mainframe aside until uh, the end of today when we merge the completed tail and tail boom assembly uh, and join it with the mainframe. Uh, for now, we're going to focus on the tail box and then move into the tail rotor and then eventually merge this with the tail boom. Now, a quick note about the manual. Uh, I don't understand why helicopter manuals do this, but it's uh, the case with the Nimbus as well as most, you know, many other helicopters. The first thing they have you do is take the empty tail box and attach it to the tail boom. So now every other thing you have to do with the tail, you do with this giant tail boom moving around your workbench and hitting things and knocking things off your workbench. And it's just annoying and in the way. And I've never understood why they do that. So the very last thing I do will be to merge the tail boom with the tail box because there's no reason you need to do it until the last minute. So that way we have a much smaller thing. We can move around our workbench as we're working on things. We're not dealing with the boom swinging around and it just makes more sense. All right, so let's take a quick look at the manual and see what the first thing we're about to tackle is. Uh, and you can see if you look at the top of the page here, they talk about putting the tail, bait, tail belt through the... Uh, tail boom, but that's just stupid as I mentioned. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to skip mounting it with those bolts as well, is we're going to take this flange bearing here, we're going to put some green uh, retaining compound on the edge of the bearing and insert it here into our tail box. So coming around to here, the most important thing uh, is to make sure you get the flange bearing in the correct side. And so if you Look at the manual. One of the nice things about the PDF manual is it's actually a high enough resolution that you can really zoom in quite a bit. And then you can see that if we orient our tail box just like it is in the picture, that we're going to insert the flange bearing in the side that has this little square kind of notched out of it um, that our pitch arm will go into. So with that, let's come back to the bench. And then you can see I've got this... Uh, Tailbox set so that the little square is visible here, and then we're going to take this flanged bearing and get some green Loctite on it. Now, the way I like to do this with always whenever I use green Loctite is to take an awl, and then I prefer to put the green Loctite on the surface versus the bearing, and it doesn't take much. What I'm doing is just kind of spreading it around in here inside this ring and just that tiny little drop really is all you need in here and then what I'll do once I have that done is take some paper towel and then just clean just across the top side and the other side I'm not going inside the ring I'm just getting any extra that came off you can see there's just a little bit there and uh, now we'll go ahead and take our flange bearing and it's just a matter of a friction fit and just pops right in like that. All right, and then we will set that there. Now, the next step that we're going to conquer is adding our tail pulley and tail shaft. Uh, so let's take a look at the manual for this part. Now, again, this is one of those instances where you really want to pay attention to the shaft orientation. And you look at this picture, you're like, what? But again, zoom way in. All right, so now we have a better picture here. So here's our tail pulley here. And then here's our tail shaft. And you know there's an indentation very close to the end of the shaft. That's where the tail rotor will attach to. And then there's an indentation that's a good, you know, eighth inch or more uh, away here. And this is the indentation that our tail pulley set screw will go into. So we know that this is the end uh, that slides in from here. Now the other interesting part of the way this tail goes together is you can see we're going to slide the tail shaft into the tail pulley and set the set screw. It's going to go through that flange bearing we just installed. But then we're going to take some more green Loctite and press fit another bearing in the other side and that is actually captured by the tail fin is what holds all of that together. Um, now Something else that is interesting, uh, XL Power has also provided a shim here for us um, that we can decide if we need with our tail rotor. So you'll notice there's an extra kind of uh, washer in the uh, parts bags here. And the purpose of that is if we feel like the fit of this tail pulley is such that uh, we want to add a little shim. If there's any play, if this is bouncing side to side in here, once we have the thing fully assembled, we're going to want to pull the tail shaft out and go ahead and add that shim. And I've heard from some folks that, you know, a, a good portion of the guys I know that have built this have gone ahead and added that shim in the end. But we'll see how uh, how it goes together. All right, so 
Coming back here, uh, again, I have cleaned all of these screws as usual. We're going to pull the uh, set screw out of our uh, tail pulley here. And then just leave that on the end of the driver. And then we've got our tail shaft. Again, we're looking for the end that the indent is furthest from the shaft. That'll be the side that gets inserted through our flange bearing here into our tail pulley. And then the set screw end is going to go uh, on this other side. Now, right here is where I almost caught myself again and forgot to install our tail belt. So we're going to go ahead and get that in here as well. We'll just feed that through the tail box, lift it up like so, and then we'll take our tail pulley. There's our end with the uh, hole for the set screw right here. And then slide it into the tail box. And it's going to be a really easy fit because we only have a bearing on one side currently. There's nothing kind of capturing this. And then from there we'll slide our tail shaft uh, into... Oops, got to get the tail belt wrapped back around the tail pulley. There we go. Keep it kind of squarish. There we go. So now I've got my tail shaft running through here. Um, so that's great. So then the next step we have to do is get this other bearing. And we're going to get a little bit of Loctite on, or I should say retaining compound or green Loctite, um, around the casing here. So I'm just spreading it around here, same method as before, and then we're just going to press fit this bearing into that hole, and really if we kind of slide the shaft up it'll help square this in. Alright, so now we've got it, boy it is a little bit tricky here to get all of this aligned, a bit of a tight fit onto this bearing, and I think the fact that I have these uh, bolts that the fin will go in. It looks like they're overlapping where the uh, bearing goes a little, so I'm going to pull those out of the way now. There we go, so now it just drops right in. Alright, so now we just press fit this bearing in place. Come on, get in there. Alright, it's a little fussy while everything's loose and nothing's tightened. And then, now that that's there, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this fin in place as well. So I'm going to grab our tail fin, and that's going to go so if here's our tail fin, tail boom will go just like this, and you can see there's two holes in it that line up. So we'll go ahead and get some Loctite on these guys. Again, nothing, that shaft is just floating loose, but I want to get a feel for if I need the shim or not, and to do that I need the tail fin on. I kind of need to start feeling how this is going to be once it's together. Whoops. And I just knocked all my little pretty pile of tail bearings out of order here. Let's fix that in a second. Snug those up. Alright, so now we've got a feel for uh, just how tight this is going to be. Now granted, I haven't tightened this shaft at all, but I can still take the tail pulley and just see if it moves back and forth. But really what I need to do is now screw it down to this shaft. Okay, so... Speaking of screwing this down to the shaft, first thing you want to do is get some, I prefer to use red Loctite here on the set screw for the tail pulley. So we'll get some of that going. And because you definitely don't want this backing out, you will lose all tail authority. So take that and I roll it in the red Loctite, give it a big old bath, and then I'm going to work almost all of it out. I'm just pushing it into all of the threads of that pinion. You can see that's, you know, most of that came right out. Okay, so now we slide our tail shaft to the point where when we look through the hole where our recess is here, we can actually see to the little depressed area, just like the one here, uh, that our set screw needs to drive into. So you got to kind of hold all of these things in alignment, thread your set screw in, let it bite, when it bites, it'll sort of bite into that depression, and then you can kind of pull back. Now, one of the things that's tricky about a 500 size is, is you only have a you know a millimeter and a half driver here, so you, you can't go crazy on this set screw. So be careful, don't snap your driver in half. All right, so now 
we've got our tail shaft and tail pulley secured. We've got our tail fin on holding that bearing in place. And now is where we want to sort of grab the tail shaft and see how much play there is, right? I'm going to pull this this, this way and that way, this way and that way. And if I get any kind of movement in this direction, I want to go ahead and add that shim. And honestly, now that I have this together, I think I'm going to go ahead and try and add it because I feel a little bit of play in there. And, you know, every bit of work you do here to avoid such things pays off. So one of the things I like to talk about whenever I'm building a tail is that um, it's one of those deals where every single step you do in the process, uh, if you take time after each step, so as we get the tail pulley on, we're just going to spin it and make sure it's smooth. We're going to make sure there's no play in it, that everything's fine. And every last piece of the tail you do, check does it move smoothly, does it move you know, freely, is there any friction, is something feel tight, is there any resistance, and you want the answer every time to it's smooth, there's no resistance, and it feels tight, and it only moves in the directions it should. If there's play in a direction there shouldn't be, uh, and we'll talk about some of these as we go through, then fix it, address it, think about it, fix it. Because, you know, all these people that have, you know, tail wag frustrations and everything else, nine times out of ten, that is a mechanical issue. And it's something that you could have addressed during the build on the tail. So take your time when you're building the tail and really check all of these things as you go through. All right, let's get back to this and see if we can get the shim in there. Um, this is the fun part, is you're trying to insert a shim that you then have to pass a shaft through uh, in a very small gap. And it can be a royal pain in the butt, I'm not going to lie. And I might honestly have to loosen the tail fin so that that bearing can kind of move out of the way a little bit and then I'll tighten it back up. This just gives me some more room to kind of move things around in here. There we go. Alright, I got the bearing out of the way. So this should now be a lot easier to do. So tail shaft, shim, Tail pulley with the belt around it, facing the right direction. And now I can kind of stick this up where into this hole where the bearing was. Oi, oi, oi. Come on. There we go. Pull the shaft down a little bit. There we go. So now I can get this. And let gravity work in our favor and hopefully hold that shim. Okay, now I can move the tail pulley. All right, we got the tail shaft through. Take this tail and press fit that bearing back there. We're going to take the fin again and restore that. And we're in business. So really, once I removed that other bearing, it wasn't so bad because you can kind of lift the tail pulley into that cavity and get the shim under it. All right, now we still have to set the set screw again which I'm actually going to remove so that I can see the recess. And hopefully that red Loctite hasn't set too much yet. I don't think it has. Nope, still comes out easily. All right, so now we're going to spin the tail shaft, find the recess. There it is. We're going to hold everything right where it is, verify it's there with our eyes one more time, and then drive this guy home. into the recess. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to check it again for play. And now, it still spins freely. That sound you hear is just the belt not moving. But it spins without any trouble in either direction on the bearings and there is zero play. Great! Alright, moving on to our next step. So coming over to the manual here, we've got all of this done, we've got our tail fin, on, we're good to go there. The next thing we're going to do is see this rear belt idler pulley, they call it, which essentially what this does is it's a pulley that sits directly above uh, the tail pulley and uh, it stops the belt from being able to come off. Uh, one of the nice things it does is it lets you run a much looser belt tension, which is handy if you're a big fan of doing autos. Um, and it's fairly straightforward, so I'm going to gather the pieces we need for that. So we're going to need to get our two metal spacers, our long bolt, and our bearing. And then the bolt will enter from the 
uh, tail fin side. It actually goes through the tail fin itself. And what you do is you slide the bolt through and then get your first spacer on and then get the bolt even with just that spacer. And this bearing kind of sits right on top of the boom, or on top of the tail pulley rather, on top of the belt. So you can see here, I've got that now inserted on the bolt. And then this last part's a little tricky. You've got to get this last spacer on the bolt and then start threading it into that hole. So the first tricky bit is just to get the spacer in there. Um, and it just takes some noodling about, which is trial and error. There we go. All right, so now we're this far. So that's good. We've gotten it, you know, the, the head of the, or the tip of the bolt is probably about here. So now we've got to very carefully get this lined up and persuade it to screw into here. And by the way, we also need to get some Loctite in there. So the way I do that, because uh, I don't want to risk getting blue Loctite all in the bearing, is I'm going to take some blue Loctite, put it on the tip of my awl, and I'm just going to paint the inside of these threads here. And as this bolt threads in, it'll grab those. So this effectively just puts a little bit of blue Loctite right on the threads, right where we want it. So we're going to take our driver here and kind of persuade it into alignment and kind of, kind of push down a little and then it'll go right in there and then we're just going to tighten this down. And again, just kind of snug it up, give it a little extra and then you're good. And now we have this uh, idler sitting directly over the belt here such that it's just not going to come off. You could run like no tension here and it's it's not going to come off. Okay. So now we've got a tail box, tail fin, tail shaft, tail pulley, our idler pulley. Uh, the tail box is, is coming along nicely here. Let's see what's next. All right, so the very next thing we're going to do here is get the tail pitch lever support bracket. And this is going to go into that uh, sort of funny square recess uh, that we saw so we are going to grab our tail pitch lever uh, here and disassemble it, okay? So this piece is the tail pitch lever and it comes fully assembled. Again, I've removed all of these screws and cleaned them. So now I'm gonna take them all out and we're gonna disassemble this completely and make sure we get Loctite on all of the things. So we'll take the little screws that'll go into our tail pitch lever or tail pitch slider rather. And then we're gonna take these guys out. Actually, I'm gonna leave those in for right now. Okay, so, up oh, this one's great. So, this is our tail pitch lever here, and it does have an upright side, and the side with the threads in it that are arm, which on other helicopters you may be used to facing down, is actually the top here. So this will sit into that little recess. So you can see the little square recess here, uh, just like so, um, and then upright. And then there's an access hole from the other side for us to get the bolt started. So we'll go ahead and get that going. I am gonna use uh, red Loctite on this bolt. Uh, the reason I do that is because having tail control is massively important and it's a single bolt and a single point of failure. Right? So in some of these applications where there is a single point of failure, uh, I like a little extra insurance and I'll use red Loctite. Again, I'm gonna try and get most of that red Loctite out in my finger and really just have some in the threads. Uh, so yes, I'll need to use heat to remove this bolt, but it's not gonna be awful. So to get this in, really, you wanna kinda just get the bolt sticking out so you can see now with the driver, I've just gotten the bolt here uh, to just kind of stick its head out. And then I'm gonna hold this again with the threaded side up and hold these two pieces square and get them started. And then once it's started, kind of set this in that footprint. You can see, and before you tighten this all the way, make sure that it's sitting within that little square cutout and it's not crooked, because if it's crooked, you're gonna mangle it. All right, so now it's there, I'm gonna go ahead and get that nice and snug. I don't want any play in that whatsoever. So now our uh, tail pitch lever is uh, 
Good. All right. Okay, so looking at the manual here, you can see we've got a little bit of work to do and some disassembly to do. Uh, we're going to see if these bearings have, in fact, already been glued in here with some green retaining compound. If they haven't, we'll go ahead and add some of that. And then we're going to get some Loctite on all of these screws, as well as add our tail pitch control arm right here and get the servo ball in there. So let's slowly work through all of those things. Now, I kind of like to leave some of these parts on uh, together and then sort of disassemble and reassemble them right away because it just helps me remember where all the washers and all those other parts are. So that's why I didn't completely disassemble this right here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is these two screws right here, top and bottom. So I'm going to pop uh, the top one out here. And I didn't look too closely at the manual here, but sometimes there's some very tiny washers involved back here. So just as you take it apart, be very mindful and careful of those. So we're now going to slide this off here. And all we're checking now is these two bearings that are here and here. Uh, do they already have retaining compound on them? So I just take the tip of a driver and also oh gently push on them. And they don't. They just popped right out. So we're going to make sure we get that taken care of. Same thing here, popped right out. So we'll go ahead and add that now. Same thing, green Loctite, all trick. And just spin it round and round and round and round and round. Same thing on the other side. These are tiny bearings. It wasn't. It won't take a lot. And then I'm going to take some paper towel and just dab it on the inside and outside. I'm just trying to get any extra Loctite out of there. And then we're going to go ahead and add these flange bearings back in uh, carefully here. And the flange goes on the inside here. So there's one. And here comes number two. It's a little tricky here. Get on in there. And there's number two. Great. So now we can slide this back over our uh, tail pitch lever arm. Just gently rest it there and we can get some Loctite on these bolts. In this case I'm going to use blue because there's two bolts so it's not a single point of failure here. Um, and then and don't go crazy tightening these here and come in here. Great. And then again, every step, make sure things are moving freely. So we've got our Loctite there. Now we need to add the tail pitch control arm to the top. Um, so we're going to sort of dry fit this first. There's a little bit of kind of a, a raised uh, piece here. I'll show you in the manual here. So if you look here closely, you can see there's this sort of raised step, and that is the top side. And there's a little bit of a raised circle shape here that your servo ball will screw into. So let's take care of the servo ball first. Uh, again, with that, we're going to use a red Loctite. Single point of failure. Don't want that coming out. All right, so now that we know where this servo ball is going to go, we'll take our control arm and just tighten that up again. We got a little bit of red on that. Our red Loctite single point of failure theory and then this side with the little raised bit is going to go in top on top of our uh, arm here such that it goes uh, this way and it'll go in the holes sort of closer to the hinge line and there are two bolts for that. Get some Loctite on those guys here. Again, we got two points here, so blue Loctite's fine. And I like to kind of orient things the way they'll help it make sense to my brain. So this goes, skip the first hole, that's where our little uh, special bolts that will ride in the slider go. And that'll all make sense if for some reason this is the first tail you've built in just a minute. I can remember building the XL Power 550 was my first kit build, and I can remember putting the tail together for the first time and not really understand what I, understanding what I was doing, just sort of staring at the manual and putting pieces in the same positions, and it's not until the tail comes together that your brain goes, oh, I get it, that's how you change the pitch on the tail rotor from the servo. So the one thing, if you have built another helicopter that'll look funny, is this bell crank arm 
our uh, pitch control lever is on top of the tail case, and that's weird. Usually it's on bottom in most other kit builds. All right, so now, next thing to do is to insert these uh, two screws here that have the sort of smooth uh, nub at the end, and I like to use just a little bit of red Loctite here. Now, in the case of these, since they've got this little kind of nub on them that's smooth, we're gonna wanna make sure and wipe that off with a paper towel because uh, inevitably we're going to end up getting some red Loctite on that. We want to get that off first, but in order to get it into the thread of the screw, you kind of have to just get some on there. All right. Go ahead. And just snug that up. Don't over-tighten that guy at all. And then again, we're just going to wipe all that extra red off of there and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I was trying to get ahead of the game last night and laid out everything for the tail and uh, not really thinking about this tail belt knocking into it non-stop. Probably should have started with the tail rotor. It's all good. Won't take us long to put it back together. Okay, same thing here. Just going to snug it up. Boom. That's good to go. I'm going to wipe all the excess off here. I expect our Pitch slider is where we're headed next, but let's uh, let's take a look. Come so on. moving on to our next step, we are in fact headed to the uh, tail pitch slider. So the way this mechanism works, you can see in the manual here, it kind of lists where all of these bearings are, and we're going to check these uh, carefully and see what's been pre-assembled and what hasn't. I suspect this is mostly pre-assembled here. So it looks like these bearings have both been secured. They're not budging at all. Great. All right. So really all we have left to do is take this brass sleeve, slide it back through here and get some Loctite here. Now, if you buy this, you're going to get the whole assembly again. So I'm just going to go ahead and use reg Loctite. There's not really any time I'm going to disassemble just part of this to repair it. So I'm going to use my awl here just to make this a little whoops, easier and just work it into the threads. So now we take our tail pitch slider and just screw this all the way down. And then you'll see that this has kind of a, a nut shaped pattern on it. So we're going to grab uh, either a pair of pliers or a wrench because uh, we don't need a lot of pressure on here and just hold that snug Oops. there we go and now I'm just going to torque it just a little bit there we go that is now good to go so now if we take this and slide it on here again you can see that our servo moves this bell crank right here with the push rod and then that motion is then in turn transferred to our tail rotor via this pitch slider. So you can see as this moves, that moves back and forth. So we're going to take this whole assembly now, pop it off again. We've got to work on the pitch slider a little more. So now we know that this rotates smoothly. We know that this moves smoothly. We just felt the tail pitch slider move up and down on the tail shaft extremely smoothly, right? So we know that we're smooth to this point and we're going to keep sort of checking in like that as we go. The next thing we need to do, let's come back to the manual for a second, is get what I call the dog bones, they're actually called tail control links, uh, onto this pitch slider. Um, and we do that with a bolt, a little tiny bushing that'll go inside the plastic here and then it threads right back in here with some Loctite. It is extremely important that these dog bones have extremely smooth and free movement. Um, if they're notchy, uh, we're going to sand them. If they're funny, you know, we're going to work on this for a minute here, okay? So sometimes, you know, you get into the build and, you know, it just goes together like butter and you, you know, bolt it all together. You can flop the arms around and you're good to go. And sometimes they're rock solid and, you know, you feel resistance when you move them. And that's when you're going to stop, take a minute, take them all the way apart, get them moving freely depending on, you know, what the symptom is, you know, you take steps to avoid it, and we'll talk about some of those, uh, and then continue from there. So don't go beyond this step until both of those controllings are moving very freely. All right, let's dig into it. So we know that we have our uh, links here, got our little uh, brass spacers, and our dog bones. So the dog bones, if you look closely, on one side of them have 
a number 1 and the other side is blank and that is because when we install them in our pitch slider they need to be opposite to each other. They can't both face the same way because of how they're controlled to the tail pitch rotor. So you can actually, we'll zoom way in here to our manual again and then you can see you know, this could be the side with the one and this could be the side without it. All right? And then we'll be good to go. And then you can see the direction of the bolts run opposite from each other to the bench. So, first thing I try and do is just insert this in between the little fork here and just see how tight a fit it is. And it feels really tight already. All right, so let's start by taking our brass little bushings and sliding it into one of our dog bones. We're going to orient this just like it is in the manual and then what you want to do then is look at uh, your slider and figure out which side has the threads in it and it's tricky because of course they're black threads so if you can't tell really well you can just literally slide the bolt in. So we're going to take our slider here, we're going to face the number one towards us and now we're going to slide this in between the arms. Wow, that is tight. And see, I don't even have the bolt through here and I can just feel the friction in here and I, and I don't like that one bit. What we're going to do is get some sandpaper and files. So I have a file here that's got a very fine uh, pattern on it and I'm just going to gently rub the uh, link and the bushing on top of it. Just a little bit. We're going to go in small steps because we can always remove a little bit of material but and be fine and test fit and try it and then you know put it back uh, to see if it fits. But if we take too much material away we can't we can't put the material back. So we're going to go real slow here as we do this. Alright so I'm just going to test fit this. I'm not going to put any Loctite in. I'm just going to snug up this bolt and then I want to see how well does this link move? And that to me is too much friction. I know, so we're going to try and take a little more material off here. Again, we're working in very small steps here. And I'm not really worried about which side is the one and not for now. I just want to keep test fitting this until it feels good. Much better. Alright, so after working with that, it now, you know, pretty much fall under its own weight. Now it is extremely, you know, it's swinging back and forth as I flick it, you know, easily. That's really loose. I know this is kind of hard to see, but uh, you want this to be really loose. And now that that's loose, we're going to go ahead and pull the bolt and pay attention to which side the number's on. Uh, on the top, I'm just going to match the way they have it laid out in the manual. I want the side with the one uh, facing me. And then our bolt head will go through here. Then I'm going to do that same trick with the Loctite I did before, where I basically just back the screw out and then use our awl to get some. Actually, I'm going to use red Loctite here, I think. So we'll use the awl to get some red Loctite in the hole. Swirl it around in the threads there. And then push our screw into it. You can see that. And we'll go ahead and tighten that. And just kind of snug it up. And then double check. Still looking good. Still moves really freely. Alright. So again, every step we take, we look at doing this a little differently. So, now if we flip this around again, it's going to be the same thing. So we're going the opposite way. So the bolt will go through this side. This, the number one will be on the opposite side than it is on the bottom. I'm just going to dry fit this in here. Wow, I actually can't even get this in here. It almost looks like these are compressed a little. I might actually very gently give these a nudge. Just ever so slightly. These are super soft metal, so I'm just trying to get it. It looks like they were torqued just ever so gently. All right, much better. All right, so let's get our bushing, pop that in. And then let's double check that since the one is not facing me on the bottom, it will be on the top. And let's test fit this bolt here. Again, this bolt is going to run the opposite direction from the other side. Snug that up. And then still a little tight. So definitely need to do a little more sanding here. 
again on the other side as well. Alright, let's give that another try. Better, but still too much friction. Take a little more off. Again, just snug that bolt up. There we go. Much better. Much better. Alright, let's pop this out just a little. Basically pull it out of the threads. And get some red Loctite in with our awl here. Tighten our bolt into it. Pop up any extra red Loctite and then check it. Great. I just spent a little bit of extra time and effort there, right? So we took a file and, you know, filed down with the brass bushing inside of these dog bones. But now they're moving, you know, extremely smoothly and freely. You know, there's not a lot of play in them or anything. Um, but we just took the friction out, right? Again, every single part of this tail we want smooth, 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 smooth. So now we get to tuck this aside. Basically, we can take our main uh, assembly here, slide this in, put the pins in. And this guy right here can just uh, get tucked away, and we're going to work on the tail rotor. Uh, I have accidentally nudged all kinds of these parts I had neatly laid out, so I'm going to get these neatly laid out again, and then we'll come back and uh, dig into the tail rotor. All right, so I've got all the tail parts laid out again, uh, nice and neatly in the order they'll go in, but let's take a quick look at the manual, and then we can talk about it a little more from there. All right, so this is how our tail rotor assembly will work. We've got our uh, tail uh, tail rotor hub right here, and then we've got a couple of these hard plastic uh, palm dampeners uh, that'll go in the head, and then we've got a washer here, as well as an optional shim not shown here. If we get a little play in the tail rotor, we can go ahead and add those. Um, and then we've got our two blade grip arms and then those will be followed by a bolt and washer into the end of our feathering shaft. That's this metal shaft that runs through the whole thing. But inside each of these blade grip arms are a bearing uh, captive right here, and then this stack of bearings. We've got what's called a thrust bearing. We're going to talk about how those work and go together. Uh, just a regular old washer and then another uh, bearing here that will go in the blade grip. So we're going to do this sort of piece by piece. I generally like to start with the center hub and get that built with our feathering shaft through it and then our washers kind of hanging out on it and then I'll work into the blade grip arms and then we'll slide those on one at a time and then we'll talk about how we tighten and test things. Now, uh, we definitely want to make sure we get some grease on these thrust springs and we'll talk about that and we want to make sure that the larger eye diameter or ID bigger, that means inside diameter bigger towards the tail hub. And I'm going to show you how to figure that out in just a second here. Okay, so now you can see that my layout here looks a lot like the manual, and I'll walk you through it here. So this is our feathering shaft that will run through our center hub. And then we've got these two little hard plastic uh, palm type dampeners here. And then we have the washer that we're definitely going to use, and then a thinner optional uh, shim in here. If we have any play in the tail, the shim will take it out, and they just provide these because of, you know, variances in manufacturing. You may or may not need them, um, but they're not mentioned in the kit at all, so that's one of those things you just kind of have to know. Uh, we've got our servo balls, which we're going to have to take out and get some nice red Loctite into our blade grip arms, and then this is what will actually go inside the blade grip arm. So inside here, there is a uh, bearing that's probably already captive. It generally is, but we're going to give it a gentle push with a driver, and let's see if it pops out. If it pops out, we're going to put some green Loctite on it. But nope, that is definitely in there for good. So that has been pre-installed at the factory with some bearing retainer. We will not use a bearing retainer on this other bearing because it's just the compression of the tail rotor will uh, mean that the bearing can't go anywhere, so there's no need. Um, and all of these, this is one of our bearings, washer, and then these three make up what we call a thrust bearing or thrust um, in a stack, and then they will be captured with this bolt and washer into the ends of this feathering shaft. So we're going to take this on step by step. It works exactly like the main rotor head, honestly, so fairly simple. So, um, and some folks are probably going to tell me I don't really need grease in this main hub with these little hard dampeners, but I'm going to put it in anyway because it doesn't hurt a thing. So the way I do this is just like before. I take my shaft and loosely place it through here. I'm going to take 
the palm dampener and I'm going to kind of slide it this way and I'm going to grease it once it's past this opening and I do that so that I don't get grease inside these threads. So we'll get some grease there and then I'm also actually I'm going to pop this out for just a second. I'm going to get a little grease inside the tail rotor here. I don't need this much but we're just going to kind of get some in there and I'm going to use my handy dandy all here to kind of spread the grease where I want it and then get it out of this center shaft here so I don't fill the threads of my feathering shaft, get it in here as well and we'll take the extra out, wipe it on a paper towel okay so now we can slide this back through and then we've got that first dampener there, let's flip it around to the other side take this other dampener, slide it on get a tiny bit of grease on my finger and just kind of grease up that dampener a little as well and then slide that into the main hub here okay now so the next thing we want to do is add the washer we know we're going to use for sure it's the slightly thicker of the two and again when you unpackage all this stuff pay attention to what package it's in because it's usually packaged in a way that makes sense you know the washers that go with the hub were probably packaged with the hub. I don't remember offhand uh, when I unpacked it yesterday, but uh, just keep an eye with where you find them because contextually it kind of gives you some clues. But the other thing is, you know, the manual is very good at giving you the dimensions of the washer, and again, when you have your digital caliper handy, you can always figure out which washer is which that way by thickness, uh, inside diameter, etc. All right, so now we can take our center hub and tuck it away for now, and now we're going to work on our blade grip arms. Uh, first thing we're going to do is take the servo balls out and get some red Loctite on those, because we do not want those coming out. These guys will go in this orientation here. Again, just kind of snug those up. Same thing on the other side. And there we go. Those are now ready to go, except for their innards. Uh, all right, so now let's start working. So here's how I do this. I take a driver, and I work from the outside in. And by that, I mean from this stack of washers, which is going to go inside the grip in this order. This one goes in first, then this one, this one, this one, this one. So I'm going to work from the back of it, and I'm going to slide it onto this driver, and then insert this whole driver into the blade grip. Now, a thrust washer uh, consists of a smaller diameter outside washer, what we call the cup washer, which you'll see has like the little ball bearings kind of captive in there. And then that will ride in uh, there. And then a third, larger inside diameter washer, and then the three of them fit together in such a way with these grooves on the outer washers facing the inside cup washer that they rotate freely this way. So before there's any grease on there, put them together like this and feel how smoothly they rotate. Um, and it'll start to kind of make a little bit of sense. Now, how do I tell easily without getting a caliper out which has the smaller and larger inside diameter? diameter. I always want the largest inside diameter closest to our center hub. Well, the answer is you just take the feathering shaft and put the, this is the larger inside diameter, but in case I didn't know, put the thrust washer on it and you're going to rock it back and forth. Now, do you see how much that moves? As I rock it back and forth, you can feel that it's not, you know, tight to the diameter of the shaft. And I'm going to take the one with the smaller inside diameter and you can see it rocks very little. And that's how you can very quickly tell which is which. All right, so let's go ahead and start getting this thing greased up. So again, tail rotors, you don't need quite as much grease, especially on a 550 size, these are pretty small, but just put a little bit of grease on the uh, thrust washer there and then slide it onto our driver. And then we're gonna get our cup washer, take the cup side, the cavity side, and fill that whole cavity with grease. You don't want any voids in there. And then cover the back side as well, just make sure the whole thing is really well greased. And then I like to run the cup side of my washers out. So I'll face the open cup side towards that first thrust washer. 
And then again, with these thrust washers, the side with the little groove channel, which obviously runs against those ball bearings, make sure you face that in towards the cup washer. I'm going to slide this guy on there. Okay, so now that i got my thrust washer, I'm going to take a second to just kind of wipe my fingers of excess grease here. And then you can just slide this washer on oops, to our driver, and then this bearing on as well. Okay, so now I've got all of that stacked up on my driver. And I'm going to slide this driver, and it fits right through that first bearing, in. And then we're going to just slowly, and it takes a minute to get it all aligned correctly, so take your time. So now you can see I've got that whole stack of washers in, and I'm just going to use the driver to push it all the way home. And then I'm gently going to remove the driver. So I know it's very hard for you to see, but you can see that whole stack of washers is now neatly inside the blade grip. So I'm going to take this blade grip and just set it right there for a second. Wipe my fingers one more time, and then wipe this driver off. And then what I'm going to do is get this bolt on this side here and get some blue Loctite on it. So really pushing that into the threads. Take this washer on the outside, slide that on there. Alright, so now I've got that set. I'm just going to set that there and I'm going to very gently slide this onto our feathering shaft. And I'm then going to take this bolt and put it into the feathering spindle. Being careful not to get Loctite on any of the bearings or whatnot and loosely tighten it down. Now I'm not going to be able to tighten this all the way because after a minute it's just going to start spinning the feathering spindle and you can see that. Now be mindful that this washer doesn't fall off um, and then we're just going to tuck that aside. So now we've got our one blade grip. Again, this is that extra shim that I don't know if we need yet so I'm just going to leave those uh, out of the running for now. All right, we're going to repeat the process working from the outside in on the other side, same rodeo. I've already checked these thrust washers, so I know that this is the smaller inner diameter thrust washer on the outside there. So that'll go onto my driver first. And then we've got the cup washer. Again, we're going to just fill this sucker with grease. Well, I'm going to run. It's most important that you run, and some, there are some folks that think the cup should run in towards the hub. There's a, you know, there's a lot of things in this hobby there's debate over. The important thing when you build a main or tail rotor is that your cup bearings are symmetrical. So whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. You want to run them in, run them in on both sides, out, run them out on both sides. Pop that on there. There's our thrust bearing in. I'm going to wipe all that extra grease off my hands now. And maybe a little bit of the stuff off of the driver here. I don't want a crazy amount of grease, and then we're going to slide our washer, and then our bearing. And it is completely okay to stare at the manual and stare at that stack a million times and make sure you have it right. Here's another thing. Uh, as I slide this into here, uh, it's also completely okay if, as you're building a main rotor or a tail rotor, if the first time you try and spin it, I'm just going to pack that in again and then take the driver out, uh, you feel friction. It doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel smooth, it feels notchy. Don't ever be afraid to take these apart and rebuild it, right? It, it may be you did nothing wrong, that everything's in you know, the right order and that you did everything correctly, but you know sometimes things get unseated or a little funky. Uh, it never hurts to pull it all apart triple check everything. Maybe you find something, maybe you don't. Sometimes the act of just taking it apart and putting it back together again fixes whatever little tiny thing was slightly out of alignment. Um, but make sure, again, I know I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here, but make sure things are running smooth. Alright, so now we're going to take this blade grip and we are going to attach it to our feathering shaft. So we'll just sort of gently slide that down. And then we're going to get our driver again with our bolt. Get some Loctite on it, get our washer on here, and get that into the end of our feathering shaft. Now we're going to run into the same problem here pretty quickly where uh, I'm just spinning the other side here as I try and tighten it. So in this case I'm actually just pushing it out the other side. So. We're going to need another driver from the other side of the same variety. These are two millimeter drivers. So I'm going to push this stack back, 
with the one driver here. You can see I'm kind of working against each other just to get this first screw started. All right, so now I've got both screws started. So now this is one of those instances we're not just going to snug it up. We're actually going to put some some little force here, and I'm going to triple wipe all the grease off my hands because it makes the driver very slippery. And we're going to counter tighten these against each other just like we did with the main rotor head. Plenty of force here. And then pop the drivers out. Alright, first thing we want to check is do they rotate smoothly? The answer is a solid yes, which is great. Alright, I'm going to try and wipe some of the grease because it gets on everything off of these grips so I can grab them a little better. So I'll give that a really good wipe down. And then the next thing I want to check is do I need these shims? The way to find that out is I'm going to take these two grips and pull them apart and push them together, part together, part together, part together. And if I feel these blade grips kind of pulsing in and out, like there's a little bit of wiggle in here, then I need to add those shims. So let's see how we do. I think I'm going to add them. There's just, it's, it's just a tiny, tiny bit of play, uh, but I think I want to go ahead and add them. So, and at least see what it's like. So to do that, you have to install two drivers again. Okay, so now we're going to go in the loosening direction, and then what you'll find is only one of these two screws will pop. So you kind of keep going until you figure out which one that is. Looks like it's going to be this guy. Boy, these little shims are tricky. So we're going to slide this shaft out. Got to try and get that palm dampener to go back there. Okay, great. It's like a regular washer, slide it on here. Now I need the shim, which I believe is this guy. Yep. Is a little bit thinner. Holy cow, it doesn't want to go on. Delicate. All right, there we go. So now I've got that. That's going to go through, back through our, I'm just going to put a driver on this so I can get some pressure here. Go through here. All right, so now I've got our, so in this process I've managed to get a little bit of grease in this thread here. So we're just going to stop for a minute and pull that out with the awl. And just make sure we get all that grease out of there. We want those threads to take Loctite, not get grease in there. All right. So now I take same thing, factory washer or the planned washer, and then the shim. Great. And now we take our piece here and merge these back together and start tightening. See the gap start to close as we get there. Okay, so same thing. We're going to put a bunch of force here again. Okay, get our drivers out. And everything here is still smooth. So that's great. There's no, you know, added friction uh, by adding that shim in there at all. Um, and now we'll check the play again. So same, same test, we're going to kind of push-pull, and there's nothing there. That little bit of give is, is completely gone. So definitely worth putting the shim in. Don't automatically add it on your kit. Uh, if you need the shim, add it. If you don't, don't add it. You're just going to be adding friction if you don't need it. You're filling a gap that you didn't want to fill. So now we've got our main uh, tail rotor hub good to go. We can actually join it with the rest of the tail. So let's take a look at the manual for that and go from there. You can see in the manual there's a uh, note saying, you know, tighten it securely, ensure the little uh, grub screw that's in our uh, tail rotor uh, hub here, uh, right here, connects to this little recess right here. So, you know, much like we did with the tail pulley uh, and other areas here. And then if we go to this other corner here, you're going to see you want to pay attention to the direction of the tail grip arms. So the easiest way to do that is actually just to keep this picture Nice and zoomed up in your manual. We're going to want to make sure, you know, our top one here has got the bolt head running through. And then we want to look at the uh, the dog bones here and make sure that the end going on this servo ball is correct. It'll be obvious, you know, one end, much like a ball link, is slightly wider than the other. And the wider end goes onto the ball first. So we'll check all that and talk about it as we get to it. So for now, the first step is to bring our... Uh, tail assembly back into the mix and then we're going to take this little tiny set screw out and I 
am 100% positive I did not take out this little set screw and clean it. So we're just going to do that now. So I'll leave that on the end of the driver. And then same rodeo here as with all the other times. Take our acetone or alcohol, whatever you prefer. Soak a rag with it. And then we're going to do a really good job of cleaning this. And if you don't do a good job of cleaning this, this little screw will back out and uh, your tail rotor falls off. So I'll let you uh, imagine whether that's a good thing or not. Um, so you can see here on our tail rotor, we've got this little uh, recess right here. So we're going to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to add, make sure you've got your tail pitch slider installed first um, and that uh, that is good to go. Uh, because if you put the hub on and you didn't put your uh, pitch slider on, obviously that's bad. So um, we're going to try and get this. So I'm going to kind of spin it such that our recess is directly on top. And then I'm going to get our tail rotor aligned in such a way that it's the same way. And then just like before, you can kind of sight right through it and see that recess. So I'm going to hold that steady while I soak the set screw in red Loctite, wipe most of it away on my finger, and then get it in there, holding it as steady as I can to make sure it makes contact with that recess. There it goes, you can kind of feel it when it does, and then you can now sort of, I'm going to be cautious about putting too much force on this little set screw, but definitely get it in there, torque pretty good. All right. So that is now good to go. So now, okay. So now we're going to take. We've gotten our tail rotor secured. We got our set screw tightened. We're going to take our uh, pitch control arms and link them to our servo balls here. So first, make sure that it's still in the track and moving. Uh, the pitch slider is moving up and down, and that's all set. So we need to make sure. So that little number one, remember, that was on the outside of our pitch links needs to be on the outside of the link. So the side that goes against and clicks onto the servo ball should be the side without the number one, okay? And that's very important. So make sure you get that right. Uh, these are a set of links, uh, ball link pliers, uh, available at HeliDirect. Um, they are fantastic for this task right here. So you just take them, grip, and gently push, and it just kind of makes a gentle clicking sound. Uh, this second link is always a little trickier to get on. Actually, it wasn't too bad here. And then we'll get that popped on as well. All right, so now we have a working tail rotor. So we can take this uh, bell crank here and just work it back and forth. Let's make sure this whole tail feels really free, right? It should move very easily, just like so. And it feels great. There's really not much resistance at all. Uh, there's almost zero resistance, uh, just like it should be. You should be able to operate this from either blade grip really easily any point this should all feel super free if for any reason this does not feel free investigate right here's when we want to work on where is it binding what's coming up uh, what are we worried about so that's great so with that we have ourselves a working tail rotor uh, we're going to call it a day here. We've got our tail rotor assembly completely done and ready to go. It's all moving very smoothly and feeling really good. Again, make sure you double check it before you move on from here. Uh, our next episode, we'll go ahead and take this whole tail assembly on a boom and merge it with the main frame of the helicopter. We'll get our main shaft in, our main gear, tail pulley, all that stuff uh, connected and working and ready to go. But uh, that's it for this episode. I'm Nick Wisdom and this is Hack TV. Direct!